So this is the again the, to go back to the India China comparison. One of the interesting departures that uh, India and China represent in the story of globalization is that the state in a way did not shrink with the rise of globalization. In fact, arguably the Chinese state became more powerful. You could say even the Indian state uh, if we take Aadhaar as an example of that also expanded in its capacities. So first of all I think uh, uh, Aadhaar was a response to a uh, the fact that india was building a welfare state i mean if you go back and look at the history the bulk of the social welfare programs actually began after the year 2000 mm-hmm. universal education sarva shiksha That's abhiyan right. began in 2000 uh, the national health uh, activities pensions scholarships all these were post 2000 phenomena because economic growth created in some amount of surplus uh, money that could be used for you know addressing the larger issues of creating a welfare or social security net yes and that and the realization at that point that a large amounts of money were going to be spent on welfare but uh, the underlying system of identification was was inadequate leading to craft and uh, corruption and diversion is what led to things like aadhar so aadhar was a response to the need to have much better systems of identification and targeting for welfare purposes right so and today what has happened is because of the last few years the investment in uh giving everybody an id like aadhar 350 million people have got bank accounts through the jandhan program uh mobile phones we have more than a billion mobile phones mm-hmm. we now have the infrastructure for direct benefit transfer but that's on the welfare side that's the social security side that doesn't address the aspirational side mm-hmm. which is when you have this large young population that's correct uh, how do you create enough jobs for them mm-hmm. and if the jobs are not going to come through globalization if the jobs are not going to come through manufacturing mm. then what is the domestic activity that can drive these jobs that's correct and that is frankly not been fully answered and uh, a large part of the angst is that that there are all these young people uh, but there are not enough jobs for them the same way in which dams were supposed to solve our modernization problem in the 50s it seems to me that tech digital artificial intelligence are seen as slogans you know solving our problem for the 21st century so do you think that given that experience and that dams have also led to large amount of ecological damage and so on do you think that uh, digital first is really the answer to all of india's woes in the 21st no, century no i think no sloganing sloganeering is the answer for anything so i think we have to think of it a little more thoughtfully i think the, f- the fact of the matter is that how do you a create a welfare safety net which is what we have now and and technology has enabled that safety net because you can electronically without loss transmit money into somebody's bank account in real time at scale so that's something that's a very very good capability for making a welfare state uh, possible so that's one part but i think we also have to think of how technology can be used to enable uh, learning so how do we use the power of technology to get more people to get educated get access to skills and so on how do we use technology to make small fir- small firms more efficient and productive so they hire more people so i think all we have to think through the lens of job creation and how technology will enable job creation it's not just saying technology technology it's about thinking through the what is the architecture of the future of jobs and companies and enabling that through technology so, so certainly i agree with you on the fact that we have to think thoughtfully about technology and job creation but let's ponder for a moment about what the negative impact of technology might also be because at this point of time it's seen as goody goody and you as you would have seen the netflix series black mirror which is painting a bit of a dystopian future which is which is here and this is sort of we seen in the aftermath of cambridge analytica people are surprised by the way in which technology has effects that they didn't intend it to have so do you think that anything about and particularly what i have in mind is artificial intelligence do you think that anyone anything in artificial intelligence worries you no i think uh uh there are many applications of ai ai is like a is like electricity it's a horizontal capability you can use it anywhere and uh, one of the things in the west is a lot of focus of ai is on job automation and that's obviously worrying and in fact in in the west i mean for example self driving cars autonomous cars uh, means that uh, you you know you don't need anyone to drive a car and millions of taxi drivers will be out of a job millions of truck drivers will be out of a job and so on so there's one job thing then the the whole issue of uh, 
uh, AI in decision making because then there's a whole value and ethics piece of it and how if the if the, uh, AI is doing uh, uh, decisions based on data and the data has bias built into it then the AI will have bias so those kind of issues ethics issues and then of course the concentration of data which is happening which is a few companies or a few governments having uh, vast amounts of data collected and profiting it from it through advertising and so on and what are the consequences of that in terms of uh, censorship in terms of uh, surveillance surveillance in mm. terms of uh, uh, political meddling which That's happened right. in the US election so obviously we are we are seeing some of the negative uh, consequences of technology especially so in the last couple of years mm -hmm. but having said that i think when i think about applying ai in india or tech in india in general mm -hmm. i would see it from the lens of uh, job creation i would see it in the sense of uh, using it to create a perpetual perpetual learning model for our people about improving the quality of healthcare and education so or, or legal services so my view is these technologies if properly used and and there's an if there if properly used can have enormous benefit especially now with the rise of technology we are going to be dependent on experts right and uh, i mean they have a bigger role th in the economy uh, you know the economy is much more um, technical if i can put it like that uh, sure. uh, and and the political relationship between tech expertise okay we might not be like the west uh, but where do you think we ought to be where where should the kind of political uh, role be is it just yeah that's, that's no i think that's, uh, uh, because i think there is a question of responsibility with yeah, sure. the question of technology yeah no i i, I think obviously the uh, 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 political establishment mm -hmm. which is uh, elected through due process yeah. are the legitimate deciders of priorities of a country so you know in terms sure. of uh, you know what to do mm -hmm. and how to do mm -hmm. it and so on but i think uh, uh, if there are experts who can provide inputs or ideas and they some of them get picked up mm -hmm. and if the uh, and if they have the right uh, motives that that's fine but remember that it's 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 always a uh, uh, a marketplace of ideas in the sense that uh, in any country you know different ideas are put forth and uh, you know ideas come out dime a dozen they come out from different people of different ideological persuasions and then they compete and then the political establishment sees whether the value of taking on these ideas so it's 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 a it's a fairly democratic process of idea selection so this country has had experts who worked in the government it has experts who have been outside the government but had a consulting role uh, they they have fought for their ideas some of them have succeeded so it's like any other place it's it's a it's a it's a competitive democratic selection going on and i think that you've done all of the above and i hear that answer as no more political forays for you perhaps <laughs> yeah yeah i've already said that i don't want to <laughs> i mean i mean to, to, i to just be a bit naughty i just recently read richard sharma's book on the road to democracy i don't know if you've read it and yeah. and there's an anecdote that features you in it yeah. where where india's What public where india's public historian uh, ramchandra guha says that if you know india will be divided into north and south and the new the first prime minister of south india would be uh, you you know <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, you know for the listeners you are, yeah you're several speculative aspects to that statement yeah so well, which one do you like the most <laughs> <laughs> thanks nan thank you very thank much you. thank you for having me on the show